How's it going guys? It's Luna Tuka here from ConcordHealth.co, nutritionist, life coach and personal trainer. And today we're going to talk about vestibular migraines. Now, vestibular migraines is a subject close to my heart. I've suffered with them before. I've worked with a lot of clients that suffer with them or have suffered with them and need to manage them in the most effective way possible. Now, what happens is often you go to an ENT specialist or neurologist and you, you're running around for God knows how long trying to find symptoms, having MRIs and all sorts of tests. And for the most part, they come up clear. And eventually most people come to a diagnosis of something like labyrinthitis, um, vestibular neuritis or vestibular migraine. Now, if you've been diagnosed with vestibular migraine, it's a horrible condition. You can have it come on and off and go and come and go, etc. Or you can have it for an extended period of time, like I have. So I used to have waves of it. I used to have bouts and attacks that would last 10 minutes, an hour. And I actually didn't know what it was for well over a year. But it wasn't until I had a sustained attack for a long period of time, over five weeks, I, I figured out something was wrong. And eventually, we... I came to the diagnosis with the help of ENTs, et cetera, of vestibular migraine. Now, me being me and doing the job I do as a uh, functional nutritionist, I want to get to the bottom of these things. I want to know exactly why and why these things are happening and how I can heal them naturally. That, this is what I do. So some tips for you guys. Anyone out there who is struggling with this horrible, horrible, awful condition of things that have worked for me, and work for my patients um, and, and will hopefully work for you. So um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and some things that you can start working on here. So number one is get a private blood test done. Now, the reason I say this is there's many underlying factors that can cause, to, um, cause you to have a vestibular migraine or to have any type of migraine. Things like food intolerances, uh, vitamin nutrient deficiencies, systemic inflammation, um, gut microbiome issues, and all of these things can be huge contributors. Now, if you don't know what's going on with your body, you're guessing. So you can go online, you can go to all these um, YouTube channels and Google sites and doctors and they'll tell you to take this vitamin, that vitamin. Well, essentially, if you don't know what's going on in your body, you're stabbing in the dark. So one of the first things I do with, with patients is I take um, a history and a symptom list, etc. But then I will run blood tests and I will run stool tests. I want to know, along with some other tests possibly, I want to know exactly what's going on with an individual's body. So it's really important, if you can afford to do so, then pay for some private testing. I do um, some testing through FDX, Functional Diagnostics, and they do, in my opinion, the best blood testing in the world. Gives you a 97 page report that shows everything from your function to individual vitamins, um, nutrient deficiencies, inflammation markers, and so on. And that gives us a really, really good understanding of where somebody might be suffering, uh, what, what might be causing someone to suffer from a problem such as vestibular migraine. So that is my first and most important tip. Now, tip number two, which I'm sure everybody knows, not everybody does, is stress management and sleep. Meditate, exercise moderately if you if you can i know it's difficult for some people when they're in this terrible dizzy state and 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 you know the last thing you want to do is exercise but actually going outside even for a walk a run if you can manage it a, a bike ride is good because the instability on the bike will help um your brain start to recalibrate um those things are great. So stress management, meditation, sleep, sleeping seven hours plus a night, making sure you've got good sleep hygiene, and exercise is number two. Okay, so I've grouped them together because I feel they're all part of a lifestyle change and they all one goes in with another. So 
Again, if you're not sure with exercise, there's some really good um, coaches online, some really good personal trainers online. I suggest get yourself a personal trainer or follow some stuff on YouTube or some basic things like yoga or, like I said, go out for a walk or a run. That's number two. Number three, um, this will be actual specific exercises, so like Cooksey Crawthorn exercises, things to um, basically get your brain back in sync. So you'll, you'll see ex lots of exercises like focusing on your finger, finger doing these left to right kind of movements, keeping the eyes in the center, up and down, eye press ups, as we call them, bringing the, the finger in and out to the eyes. Now, what these things do is they will actually recalibrate the brain's pathway to say, right, there might be a problem with an ear, let's say that it's one of the ears that's affected or something along those lines your brain will actually start to recalibrate itself to function normally. Your brain doesn't want to be in this state of dizziness. So the brain is very, very effective at finding a new pathway to recenter itself, but you need to give it the tools to do so. And Cooksey Cawthorn exercises are excellent. Google them if you're not sure or YouTube them, but I am going to do a video specifically on these exercises for people as part of my vestibular migraine series. So just look out for that and you'll have um, a ton of exercises to do there as well. So that's number three, Cooksey Cawthorn exercises. Um, number four, diet. Now, this is an interesting one. Not every diet works for everybody, okay? So a keto diet has shown to be extremely, extremely effective for migraines and relations of migraines such as epilepsy and um, Alzheimer's dementia. Now, I had really, really good results with a highly nutrient-dense keto diet, and I have really good results with clients on this type of diet. Um, lots of non-starchy vegetables, grit leafy greens, um, organic, organic meats, um, chicken, red meat is, is fine, you know, just don't over smash it, but red, red meat is fine. Uh, wild caught fish, um, eggs if you're not intolerant, um, and then cutting out a lot of the main allergens or intolerance food like nightshades, gluten, soy, sugar, alcohol, dairy, um, chocolate, cacao, etc. So get rid of all of those. Um, you allow some low GI fruits on a keto diet, like blueberries, raspberries, most of the berry groups are fine, avoiding strawberries, um, nuts and seeds are fine, but I would soak them first. So yeah, a keto diet was very effective. Now something that, if it doesn't work for you, a keto diet, you could try intermittent fasting on a paleolithic type of diet, very good for controlling inflammation again, or um, an AIP diet, which is an autoimmune paleo diet, which then does cut out eggs and things. So I've run AIP diets before myself and with clients, and most people feel really good on an AIP diet. So you've got a few options there, but if you're going from drinking coffee and sugary drinks and just bread and pastas and just complete rubbish, this sort of standard American diet, and you shift to one of these, you are going to feel better, and you're going to give yourself a lot more chance of, um, of healing quicker. So that's really important, and that's my tip number four. Tip number five is supplements. Now, I did say before, you know, you're stabbing in the dark unless you get some blood tests done. But there are some things you can do, and, you know, my, probably my most important one is magnesium. Magnesium has... 400 processes that it actually does in the body. If you're deficient of magnesium, you're gonna find yourself with all sorts of problems from anxiety to, to depression, to migraines, to muscle aches, to muscle loss, to even organ issues, because it's it's it, um, it, it helps your organs function, sorry, um, to vitamin issues, because it's a transporter to other vitamins around the bodies, uh, to, to around your body. So and many, many more, to be honest. So magnesium is really important. Now, you've got different versions of magnesium. You have, like, um, taurate, glycinate, citrate, oxide, which I'm not a fan of. Um, theonate is, is another good one. Now, 
Personally, I have got better results with glycinate, theonate, and taurate. Now, you might want to try a blend of the three or try them individually to see which works for you. The good thing about theonate, it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier, so can obviously help be effective for calming you down and anxiety, which is a big issue with vestibular migraine. Um, you know, that whole anxiety thing that comes with the dizziness, have I got a brain tumour? And we all know the route, okay? I've been there myself. So magnesium is definitely a big recommendation for, for me. Uh, methylated B vitamins as well are something really good to try and add. But again, you've got to be careful with these because if you've already got sufficient, sufficient B levels, it can make you a little bit excitable. Um, if your digestion's not great, we can have issues with B12 um, staying in the bloodstream and not actually being absorbed. Not so much of an issue with, with maybe a methylated vitamin, but you might already have B12 levels that are too high and are floating around the bloodstream. So just be a little bit careful with those. You can try them out, see how you go. Um, vitamin D, extremely important. Um, it's a hormone. If your vitamin D is low, you're going to find yourself out of sync in all areas of your life, and it can, you know, can lead to things like um, migraines. So get your vitamin D levels up. I recommend a spray with K, um, K2 in. It won't absorb properly unless you have K2 in your spray. So, um, you know, three sprays under the tongue would normally be something like 3,000 IU. It's enough for most people. If you don't have exposure to the sun and you're particularly more dark-skinned, then you can up to maybe 5,000 IUs a day and for sure pretty safely. Um, just keep an eye on your levels and maybe get measured every so often in these kind of three to six months. Um, turmeric. Turmeric or curcumin is another great supplement as an anti-inflammatory. Now, inflammation leads to disease. Inflammation leads to illness. A great anti-inflammatory, um, something that I think everybody should have in their diet. The same goes for omega-3s. I'm putting that in that category. Take omega-3s, guys. Um, if you don't take your omega-3s, or if you don't eat enough fish, take your omega-3s especially, um, because they're going to do the same things as what turmeric and curcumin do in terms of anti-inflammatories and also very good for brain health. So um, I highly recommend you do omega-3s. Um, perfectly safe, as long as you get from a good source, try and get something that's come from like um, a wild source, so wild salmon um, or like a wild, wild Alaskan, um, wild Alaskan uh, cod or something like that is, is good, okay? Um, ginkgo biloba is also good. That's shown to have uh, benefits when it comes to blood flow um, in and around the ears and around the brain. Um, it's been well researched in brain disorders, like I spoke about before, dementia, Alzheimer's, migraines. Um, I've experimented with this myself. I didn't notice huge issue and a huge improvement, should I say, personally. However, some of my clients have noticed improvements on it. Um, again, it's not one size fits all. So I suggest you guys maybe add one or two supplements in at a time and see what's working for you and what isn't. And you have to be, to a degree, your own doctor. Get the guidance of someone, but you know your body better than anyone. So um, that's my next tip. Um, supplements. So my, my tip after supplements, my next tip after that is gut health. Now, guys, gut health, in my opinion, and as Hippocrates said, disease starts in the gut. And I agree. If you have a bad gut microbiome, you have leaky gut, your, muc your mucosal lining has been damaged, you um, have systemic inflammation through the gut because of these things, you are going to get disease and you're at risk of autoimmunity. It's been shown that um, bad gut microbiome and uh, bad gut health can cause things like MS, dementia, migraines, heart disease, um, IBS, Crohn's disease, and I could, I could go on and on and on, even cancer to, um, to an extent. So you need to make sure that you're absorbing the nutrients that you eat, otherwise it's not going to matter what diet you eat. It's, you can eat the best diet on the planet. If you don't absorb the nutrients, 
it makes no difference, okay? So what I suggest is if you have any gastric issues, bloating, reflux, silent reflux, belching, farting, um, anything along those lines, you definitely, well, you more than likely have an issue with low stomach acid. Now, if that's the case, I suggest before a meal, before a large meal, or a meal, you shouldn't be eating too big, but for a largish meal that has um, protein in, so a form of meat, fish, eggs, or anything along those lines, get a small glass of water, get about this much water, and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to raise your stomach acid pre-meal. In that glass of water as well, I like to add some digestive bitters, so 20 drops of digestive bitters, and a digestive enzyme, um, ideally with HCL and pepsin in, and take that maybe five to 10 minutes before a meal. Wait five to 10 minutes, eat your meal correctly and slowly, just to make sure that your body and your, your, your digestive system is getting the support it needs to extract the nutrients and not actually um, adding to your problem by causing more inflammation and then causing um, you know, fermented foods that are just sitting in your stomach, not being digested, and their toxins to leak into the bloodstream through the gut, through through like a leaky gut wall. So again, a super important tip. Um, my last tip for now, that you know, something that's not as often spoken about as you know the things like massage therapy and meditation, and we we you know us guys know a lot of that stuff, and it's not making us better. And um, so my last tip is actually, my, yeah, it's important. My last tip is to get tested for candida and parasite infections. Now, um, if you've got a uh, candida overgrowth, a parasite infection somewhere within your body, it's going to wreak havoc. It's going to, wreck, it's going to cause inflammation. It's going to cause um, malabsorption of food. It's going to cause all sorts of issues. I mean, candida has been shown to cause heart disease, lung issues. Um, the, the, the more you know, the more standard things like dandruff, rashes on the skin. I had a yeast infection, and it gave me a rash all over my arms. My skin is something I see really common in my practice. Um, vaginal urinary tract infections. Um, thrush can cause IBS. It can cause ear infections. It can cause chronic post nasal drip. Believe me, it can cause migraines. So, I do believe if you've got a vestibular migraine and it's chronic and you can link it with one or two other symptoms of maybe a yeast or a candida or a parasite or even SIBO which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth they normally go together to be honest you've got one you've normally got the other um, I, I strongly suggest getting tested for parasites and a candida um, infection I, I highly recommend a stool test um, I run them through Genova Diagnostics and they give a really comprehensive report of exactly what's going on in your stools. Have you got any um, bacterial or parasite infections? What is the colony of your microbiome? Um, how well is your pancreas functioning? And, and many, many more markers. Now, if, if you've got an infection of some sort, an overgrowth of par a parasite infection, I'm pretty confident and it's not always the case, but I'm pretty confident that should you work hard and do the right things to clear this infection from your body, then repopulate your gut and make sure your digestion is optimized, often a lot of the body's processes start healing themselves. So um, I've left that to my last point today, but it's one of my most important points. Make sure you get tested, guys, because um, you know a virus or a bacterial infection parasite infection can 100% cause um, migraine issues or vestibular migraines and you know the body's a very very clever organism and one thing out of sync is going to knock the rest of um, the other things in your body out of sync you know just bad gut health will cause joint pain and just a whole array of issues around the body that I talked about so guys that's my tips from healing from a vestibular migraine take action today I do think the most important thing, if your issue is chronic and you're not getting any benefit from diet, from supplements, and from lifestyle changes, you need to get tested. Get some 
high quality, normally private blood work and stool tests done because the stuff, often the stuff they do at the doctors, the tests they do at the doctors, they're not comprehensive enough. The ranges are too broad and, you know, they're not giving you a real overview of exactly what is going on. So get some good testing done, guys. Get some stool tests done. And I do believe this is a condition that is completely manageable. And um, you guys just need to go down the right path and be led down the right path. So any questions, guys, leave them in the comment box. Or you can contact me on my website, conqueredhealth.co. Description's in the link below. Bang the like button if you know anybody that's suffering with a condition like vestibular migraine or even a normal migraine. Um, just, just please share this so they can watch and hopefully we can help them. Take care, guys.